swear no heartaches will ever trouble man where the poets and great authors cannot really describe all the beauty that waits inside oh what a city what a No more dying, no more pain for us to bear. Oh, what a city he's gone to prepare. There's no need for the sun there, for its light would be too dim compared to the glory of the light that shines within where the lamb slain on calvary shines brighter than the sun and all god's children who've overcome oh what a city what a No more crying, no more dying, no more pain for us to bear. Oh, what a city he's gone to prepare. Oh, what a city, what a land. Oh, I know I'll stand No more crying No more dying No more pain For us to bear Oh what a city He's gone to prepare Amen You may be seated What an awesome thing to know that a king went to prepare a place for somebody that didn't have nothing. And to know that he's going to come back and get us and take us home and spend eternity in a land where we'll never grow old. No more crying. I can't imagine that. Go down the highway, look over at somebody in the car beside you. I've seen them many a times, tears just pouring down their face. I don't know what just happened in their world, but they're crying. But you can go down the streets of glory and look everywhere you want to look. They ain't a tear there. They ain't nobody worried about nothing. Oh, what a city he's gone to prepare. There's no need for the sun there. For its light would be way too dim. Because the sun himself is going to light the city. What a day, Homer Williams, when he stands at the gate of eternity and says, Welcome home, thou good and faithful servant. I I'm glad to be a Christian. Amen. Let me sing a verse of that. Give me an A flat. Mm, I'm proud to be a Christian. Hallelujah. Are you proud? I'm proud to know my name is written there. Proud to know that Jesus is my Savior. And the Heavenly Father wrote my name up there. Well, I'm proud to be a Christian. Hallelujah. Proud to know my name is written there. Proud to know that Jesus is my Savior. And the Heavenly Father wrote my name up 
there. Amen. I'm glad I'm an American. I'm glad I'm a wheeler. But more than all that, I'm glad I'm a Christian. Amen. 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 Tammy, come sing for us this morning. Now let's worship the Lord. That's why we're here. Amen. I know everybody has troubles, but let's, let's try our best in our mind just to push them to the corners of our, just for a little while. Because if it had not been for the one we're supposed to be worshiping this morning, you wouldn't be here. Amen. So let's worship him. Amen. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Come on. for what he's done in my life and uh, for my family and my church and you know when people's not here we miss y'all a lot so, but I thank God that you made it back safe and uh, I'm just uh, overwhelmed sometimes at the things in my life and uh, the devil's still of course all of us but you know and I apologize for sometimes how I act but I thank God that he saved me and and I hope that somebody can see Jesus in me sometimes. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I'd surely fail. Without him, I
I just want to thank God for all he's done for me in my life and for always being there when I felt like I had nobody. And I'm glad I've always had a shoulder to lean on. And I thank him for everything he's doing in my life. And there's not enough words I could say to be so thankful. You could fill the book with all the stuff that I ain't proud of. Things I'd like to take back. Choices I regret. Lines in the story I just can't forget. But hallelujah, Jesus did. And I got a blank page. Cause the blood erased all the mistakes I've made and where I've been. I got a clean slate. I got a new date Cause he washed away all my sin I got a blank page I've read the words and read that talk about a love He loves me no matter what I've done and I felt his sweet forgiveness he gave me through his son. And who I am ain't what I once was. I got a blank page. I got a new date. He washed away all my sins. I got a blank page. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The blood of Jesus that cleanseth us from all sin. Most of you could probably remember the day you took the wrong turn. The day you met the wrong person. The day you did the thing that you knew you should not have done. Took you down a long, long, long road of regrets. Saying if I had it to do over, I'd go back to that couple of days in my world that totally took me in the wrong direction. But you can't go back and change that. But I am grateful that standing in the path of every sinner is an all rugged cross. You can't go back and change those days, that, but Jesus will let you start all over. <laughs> That's the beauty of being born again. Hallelujah. Allowing you. No matter what you did in your past, you're now a new creation. No longer are you the same person. No longer do you do the same things. Haunted by your past, but forgiven by a God that don't remember. Ain't you glad that Jesus Christ is an awesome, 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 awesome Savior? Amen. What a God. What a God. If you don't have Him, you never know what peace is till you find him. The book of Acts, Acts chapter number 8. The book of Acts chapter number 8. It 
it's an honor to be in his house. Went away for a few days. I was telling Ethan yesterday, man, it, when I miss a service, just one service, it feels like I've been out a month. And uh, this is where I want to be. It's not where I feel like I have to be. This is where I want to be. Amen. The Lord knows my heart. And uh, I really don't know why he's called me to be where I am in a position in a church. I just as soon stand at the back and open the door. And he knows my heart I would. And uh, But we've all got a place. And whatever that place is, let's be found faithful in our place. Acts chapter number 8, verse number 26. Verse number 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. He arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go nearer and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearers. So opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life was taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began the, at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. That's all that I want to read. Thank you for standing in reverence to the word of God. Are you glad to be in the Lord's house? Amen. I do desire Amen. Just a few moments. I won't be before you very long this morning. But it's our desire that we can feel and get a hold, amen, of the touch of God. I'm going to use something that some of you probably already know where I'm going with this. Amen. I've I, I seen something this week. was gone, amen, this week in vacation. Went out one day and gone around, amen, at uh, Goodwill and uh, went over to the side wall where they have all the dishes and all that stuff. Just looking down through there. Uh, pushing uh, Jeremiah around and uh, come up on a uh, on a, a nativity scene, one of those uh, kind that you make out of porcelain, whatever that it is, ceramic or whatever, and uh, something that had all the pieces in it and had each slot in the box for each person and each thing that went along with it. So I, I've always liked stuff like that, so I opened it up and uh, started looking through it, and there was all the wise men and and uh, everything that went along with it, the barn and everything, but the smallest part, amen, in the box and all that, uh, all the focus that went unto this thing, you'll never guess what was missing. Jesus, amen. And uh, Jesus was missing out of the nativity scene. Now how amazing, amen, that somebody would buy anything, amen, that had Jesus missing in it. And uh, But today, here we are in 2023, and we've almost figured out how to have everything there is that evolves around God in heaven uh, without the most important thing, which is Jesus. Amen. Now this man here, uh, the Ethiopian, was a very up to up to do man, I guess you could say, and he was put over all of the treasure of the queen. Amen. He was a man that could read the Bible, uh, read the law. He was a man that had it all figured out. He had all the figurines standing in place, uh, but the one thing that was missing in all of this uh, was Jesus. Amen. Now I'm thankful today uh, that we're living in the day that we're living in. I'm glad we didn't have to ride a horse to church or most of you wouldn't have made it. 
Amen. That's why they had uh, churches in every community and every holler uh, so people could just walk out and walk to the church house. Amen. But I'm glad I got in a vehicle this morning. Amen. Got up, put clothes on. I've got clothes hanging in my closet that's designated for church. I feel a deadness in you this morning. I don't know why. Amen. But let's turn loose here in just a few minutes. Now, don't hold back on Jesus Christ. Amen. These things in all of our lives. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, if it wasn't for Jesus, you couldn't do nothing. I said you couldn't do nothing. Amen. There's a lot of you fussed all the way to church. Ain't no wonder it's dead in here this morning. Amen. There's a lot of you stayed up half the night. If you're going to get dead on me, I'm just going to hammer the fire out of you. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We can be happy when we're doing things for ourselves. Hey, but we're here not doing nothing for ourselves. We're here to glorify God of heaven. We're here this morning, amen. You say you're a cheerleader. I'm trying to resurrect you this morning and let you know, amen. We're here this morning because Jesus is alive. I'm not here because the God I serve is dead. The God I serve is alive, and he's alive forevermore. Amen. What's missing in your life? I might as well just get to the meat of it and get shut her down. What's missing in your life? We figured out how to do everything in the world, but we've left Jesus out of it. Amen. Amen. We've got clothes to wear to church, but where's Jesus? We've got a standard here at this church, and that's the reason a lot of people don't come. They don't like our standard here, but that's okay. Amen. God's called me to be who I am, and this is who I am. Amen. If you're going to get in the choir, amen. You know what the dress code is. We've got one. But where's Jesus? You can figure out how to dress. But where's Jesus? You can figure out not to cuss around the right people. Where's Jesus? Amen. I've worked with people that's alcoholics that quit drinking and still died and went to hell because they didn't have Jesus. Amen. Where's Jesus at? In your nativity scene. Amen. We've got it all figured out. Amen. But we ain't got it figured out. Amen. You can't go to another nativity scene and get the piece that's missing or that one would be without Jesus. Amen. You can't depend on me ever, amen, three times a week to preach to you and that be all that you've got. You can't depend on Jesus in me to satisfy that hole that's in you. You've got to have Jesus in you to make you complete. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you Jesus can still save a drunkard and turn them around. He can make somebody. He can turn them into a saint of God. Amen. You can send them to school. You can put them somewhere and teach them not to do it. But if their heart ain't changed, amen, they'll never be any different. But when Jesus Jesus gets done on the inside. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Everything in your life will change if you've got Jesus on the inside. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got all the things that go along with church. Amen. Most churches this morning, and we could have done it too, and we wouldn't have been no different. We could have handed out a program. And said, we're going to sing two songs. And then Dale's going to get somebody to come and open up. We're going to say a few words. We're going to go to Sunday school. We're going to start looking at our watch somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 o'clock. Wondering how long are they going to go. He's going to call somebody to have a special song. And I hope it's not me. I stayed up too late. I looked at my cell phone half the night before I realized that I didn't have time to read the Bible. Here we are, got a beautiful place. The Lord allowed us to pay it off, but where's Jesus? Most of you has got more blessings in the last five years than you've got in your life, but where's Jesus? Come on, we all want more, but where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? Oh, God. I said, where's Jesus? Let's look through the life of Dale Wheeler and see if we've got all the pieces that go along with a Christian life. Amen. They ain't no Budweiser T-shirts in the door. But where's Jesus? 
Come on. We've thrown away all the things, amen, that would hurt our name because I want everybody to think I've changed. But where's Jesus? Most of us has got an attitude. That's so sorry. The world wouldn't know Jesus within a million miles of you because you got it all figured out without him. Amen. But when Jesus is on the inside, he'll put a smile on the outside. There'll be a testimony in your world, not about look what I've got, but look what he's done. Without him, you can do nothing. I said you can do nothing, but Paul said with him, I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengtheneth me. And Paul had it figured out, but he didn't have Jesus. But when he got him, he said, I forget it all, save Jesus Christ and in him crucified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where's Jesus in your world? Most of you has got more than you've ever had. Amen. That's good. I do too. Lord's blessed me with a family. Got a good job. Got a wonderful church. But let's don't forget to have Jesus. Amen. I love my wife. We're best friends. She ain't got the Jesus for me. I've got to have it for myself. But if you've got Jesus, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Because when Stephen was down on his knees and there's a throwing the rocks at him, there wasn't no beauty or glamour about that. But he had Jesus, and that was all that mattered. Because he said, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. He stood up for old Stephen because he had Jesus in his heart. Amen. In Luke chapter number 2, it goes through a whole lot in one chapter. Amen. Of the wise men looking for Jesus. And old Herod said, bring him to me that I may worship him. Amen. He wanted him out of the picture because he didn't want no glory on no Nobody but himself. Amen. Oh, that could go a lot of directions. Amen. When Jesus is on the throne of your heart, amen, you have to step down, by the way. It ain't all about you. I said it ain't all about you. It ain't all about you. It's all about him. Amen. And if you'll let him sit on the, the throne of your heart, he said, seek ye first the kingdom and all his righteousness, then all these other things will be added unto you. You know why we don't? Most churches should the doors on Sunday night. It's because Jesus ain't in the nativity scene. You know why they shut them on Wednesday night. Amen. We'll take up an offering on Sunday, brag about how much money we got, and then we ain't going to have it no more. But I want to say when Jesus is there, it ain't about how much money you got. It's about who give it to you anyhow. It's about the great I am. I said the great I am. No wonder David said, I look into the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless His holy name. I was once young and now I'm old, and I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. It ain't Wall Street, it's Jesus Christ, and that's all that matters. If you got Him, you can make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is 12 years old. It's time to go to the temple and make a sacrifice. Once a year, they go up there. We got any 12-year-old kids in here? No, but we got a bunch on their way, ain't we, boys? And girls. Huh? How old are you, Levan? Nine. Come here. Just three years older than Levanna. I mean, just a kid. Not even a teenager. We're going down here to offer sacrifice. Just hold my hand. They go down there. They offer sacrifice. They go through all that they do. And then they head back to the house. You can sit down right there. So they get three days journey up the road supposing that he was in the company. You cannot ask Sean to babysit Jesus for you. You've got to be sure he's in your heart. Amen. Amen. Don't suppose that when we get to judgment, Kaylee, that the preacher is going to say, Hey, Kaylee, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Let her come up here with me. Jesus is going to say, No, 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 it ain't about you no more. It's about me and her. 
Amen. Don't expect your mama or your daddy to babysit Jesus for you. Most of us has went a long ways up the road just supposing he's still there. Amen. What'd you do last night in preparations for today's service? Most of you would be embarrassed if you'd stand up and really tell what you did in preparation for today's service. Well, you're supposed to. We pay you to do that. If you paid me to do that, buddy, you talk about a blank. You, you give me money because you love me, but you don't pay me to preach. I told him when I come here, I'm not a puppet on a string. I love you, Homer, but I'm not your friend right now. I'm up here to tell you the truth. Amen. I love you. Amen. I can't have Jesus for everybody. That's what's wrong with us today. As a fellow one time, Brother Johnny told this the other day, come staggering out of a bar drunk, run right straight into an old preacher man. What was his name? Yeah, that fellow. It's okay. It's all right. Huh? Preacher Arrington. Oh, Bob Arrington. Huh? Harrington? Harrington. You remember me, don't you? I'm the one you saved years ago. He looked at him and said, yeah, you look like somebody I'd save. I've saved a lot of them and ain't never come back on Wednesday night. Amen. I've seen them walk to the altar and turn and look if everybody's looking before they get done on the altar. They ain't been back. Because that's looking for all the things that go around the nativity scene but wasn't willing to get Jesus. When you get Jesus in your heart, you don't care who's looking. Amen. You're, you realize all the spotlights of heaven is turned on your soul. Amen. And you realize I'm going to hell and I need help. You don't care who sees you cry. Amen. You're ready to get out from under the bondage of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation. You're ready to quit being condemned. Amen. When you find Jesus, he'll make a new creature out of you. I said he'll make a new creature out of you. That preacher don't have to run you down on Sunday night wondering where you are. Oh I'm too tired. I realize when you get old and elderly you can't get out after dark. I got enough sense to know that. Amen. But if you're able to be in the house of the Lord your heart will be in the house of the Lord. This is where you get help. This is where you get help. Somebody said that's the only day I get off. I'm going to the lake. Ain't nothing wrong going on vacation. I just got back. But you start going every Sunday to the lake, you guess what? There's going to come a time whenever that something bad hits you and you go to the hospital and you start wanting some help and you start going through the nativity scene and saying, okay, God, here I am. I need help. And guess who's missing? Who cares about big bass and bucks? I like all of that. But without Jesus, you're not going to heaven. You're not going to heaven. If you're here this morning, you figured out how to present yourself when you come. Some of the young people figure out how to tune the radio before they get out. Even the kids. People think that young people are able to handle a smartphone. They will give them to kids, little kids, and have internet and let them go in their back bedroom. Really? Are you really that dumb? Oh, I trust them. You don't trust yourself. Amen. If you do, you shouldn't. Because you're flesh, by the way. Amen. And you've got to turn your phone to make sure nobody's seeing it. Where's Jesus? Because Jesus will knock on your heart and say, you don't need to do that. And if you don't heed that warning, pretty soon you step over that and you're going to get in trouble. Some of you's already got in trouble. Some of you's already ignored the warning. You better listen to me. And be sure Jesus, hey, in that nativity scene, John, it had the little old forks where you lay Jesus. Even had the little nest, I guess you could call it, of hay that you put the baby in. Malachi went digging through the box and said, where's Jesus? I said, I know where I'm going to preach on Sunday morning. When Malachi and Jeremiah comes digging through the, the life of their daddy, will they say, where's Jesus? 
when they dig through Brandon's life, they'll say, you're successful, you're a hard worker, but there's one thing I can't find. We're Jesus. Taylor, when, you're, when your family, Tiffany, when your family dig through your life, you know because of what comes out of your mouth will let you know what's on the inside of your heart. Is Jesus in there? Just, just let me listen to you talk a few minutes. Let me see what your attitude's like. Boy, this is a message fixing to start revival. Let me go home with you. Let me talk to your children by their self and let them be perfectly honest. You ever been in the court system where the families are tugging against a child? You ever been there? I mean big children. So they make all the children go out or all the family and, all, and that judge and that child go face to face. And what that child tells that judge, let that judge know what's really in the heart of that child. And so when the family comes back in, all that garbage that you try to build up thinking, telling them that you're something you're really not, that child just let the cat out of the bag. That judge knows now where Jesus is missing in the nativity scene. I wonder if there had to be somebody, and I pray to God this never happens, and by God's grace it won't. If we'll stay close to Jesus, things will be fine. But I wonder, standing in the court of law, if they made me and Melanie go in separate rooms and made our, chi- made our, our children testify for us. When they called us back in, Johnny, who would get the children? Are you a good enough babysitter for Jesus? Wow, boy, it got quiet then. If Jesus was born yesterday and Mary needed a babysitter, what would he be saying when he come back from your house? <laughs> I heard Jeremiah, he said something yesterday. I heard somebody say something, a word that some of y'all use but we don't use. And He looked at me and he said, we don't say that. I said, no, we don't. And Seth said, you have to be careful what you say in front of him. He will repeat it. He will repeat it. If your children, boy, I don't know. I, didn't, I never dreamed this was going to go this way. But Ben, it's going down this way. I feel like I'm having to tiptoe, but I'm not going to. Some of y'all have zero victory and wonder why the devil's fighting so hard in your marriage. It's because you have no relationship at all. When you said it, can I use y'all? Thank you. When you sit at the table and eat supper and you text somebody out that way and you text, you can't text, so don't use it for an excuse. You text somebody out that way and have no communication at all other than negative. Don't expect Jesus to be in your marriage. I'm just looking at y'all. I'm just looking at y'all. Every once in a while you need to lay that thing down. Who had ever thought in 20 years that we would be where we are? I don't know how much it costs to eat at the Grove Park Inn for one plate. I ain't never eat there. Biscuits and gravy sounds good at my house. But I've been over there and took the young'uns before at Christmas to look at the gingerbread houses and there would be a man and a woman sitting in front of the fireplace Texting opposite people, never holding hands, never saying I love you. How was your day? But when they do talk, it's like two bombs going off. Because they're so eat up with Facebook and all the negative stuff in the world that they take it out on the people that are closest to them. That's why I get so aggravated with sinners. Now, I'm flesh. I'm in myself right now, so y'all just bear with me. When you try to help people and they lash back at you, does anybody say that hurts? But have you ever figured it out that they lash it to people they know they love? Because they won't lash back, they'll just give them back love. Was you ever hateful with your mama? When she's always just trying to do is love you. 
she had Jesus in her nativity scene. And she's setting up the scene so you could find him in your life. I'm glad I've got Jesus in my life. I said, I'm glad I got Jesus in my life. And the second you realize you he ain't there, hey, has anybody seen Jesus? The whole crowd expected him to be with his mama. That's where he's supposed to be. But mama thought everybody else loved him enough to take care of him. But here's the thing that most churches has not done, Johnny. They've not said, all right, here's what we've got to do. We've got to stop right now. Oh, he knows the way home. He'll be all right. Let's go. Oh, no. I'm going back to find him. And if you'll read the scripture, it took his own mother twice as long to find him as it did to lose him. So once you go to the point in your life to where you feel your life so full of things as took the place of Jesus in order to get him back where he's supposed to be, all that junk that's took his place has got to go to find true victory in our lives. Where's Jesus in this story? Homer, I love you, but if we go through all your nativity scene in your life, is Jesus in there? You see, Tucker, all them people that you're around every day, the only way they're ever going to see Jesus in you is he's got to be in you. Coming to church is a must. Reading your Bible is a must. But having Jesus is the most. And they're never going to find him if he's not in there. And if he's in there, you can't hide him. I didn't care about wise men, goats, sheep. I wanted to find Jesus. But he wasn't in the box. Is Jesus in your life? I've heard you request prayer for people in your family. What makes them feel very uncomfortable is what's in your heart. If Jesus is in there, I've heard them call me everything under the book and I've never said nothing to them. It's just because Jesus is shining. Jesus makes them feel condemned. You figured it all out. You figured it all out. But do you have Jesus? We fast three times a week. We do this, we do that. They had their robe just right. They had it all figured out. They didn't have Jesus. You've got to have Jesus in your heart. While he begins to play. Somebody said, I started going back to church again. Well, tell me about the change. I mean, Taylor, I've seen people start coming back to church and never pray. Church membership ain't worth a flip without Jesus. You can be baptized in every mud hole from here to the Mississippi River. Still die and go to hell. But if you've got Jesus in your heart, your life will change. Your life will change somebody else's life because of them watching you. Thank you, sissy. For letting Jesus shine out of your life. Because see, all that, all that stuff that goes around being a Christian does pay off. It really does. See, I learned how to be a Christian before I was ever a Christian. I had all the things set in order for the nativity scene. But that night, what I got up yonder was Jesus was laid in my heart. And it turned everything in my life completely around. Preacher man. I'm glad I'm in church, but I feel uncomfortable because I don't have Jesus. You can sing in the choir. I've heard of revivals where deacons and preachers, preachers' wives got saved because they depended on titles and education to do the job. Jesus wasn't in there. But when Jesus gets in there, things start turning around. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Preacher, I'm not ready to meet the Lord. See, the man that's in your heart be the man that you spend eternity with. 
whether it be Jesus or the devil. Oh, I've not got the devil. Hey, you do whatever the Father is, you have, tells you to do. We all make mistakes. There ain't no sense in me standing up here telling you ain't nobody perfect. But before you make that mistake, if you've got the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you, there'll always be a warning light say you don't need to do that. You say, preacher, I've sinned and I feel so condemned. I feel so filthy. I'm not ready to meet him. I know the Spirit's been different. I've been different this morning. But I felt like telling you, you better search your life and make sure you've got something besides religion in there. You better have salvation. You're going to spend eternity away from God. Preacher, that's me. Would you pray for me? Just slip your hand up high enough for me and God to see it and just put it right back down. I see the hands of the children. Would there be someone else right now? Say, preacher, please pray for me. I'm not ready to meet the Lord. I feel uncomfortable. Just pray for me. I'm not going to embarrass you. Just raise your hand up. Put it right back down. Say, pray for me. I see that hand. Would there be another one somewhere? Anywhere. Lord, in Jesus' name, help us to realize that you're available for all of our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. It's amazing what you've done for us. It's amazing the extent you went so that we could have you in our own heart. And Lord, as you're standing at the door of hearts this morning, knocking, you just want to come in and be in their heart. Thank you, Lord, for bringing them to this place. But help us not to have the ornaments of religion and not have Jesus in our heart. Would you please move in this altar call and please God. Draw people to an altar to find the missing part in their life. Lord, we ask you to help us as Christians to realize that we need to clean our lives. Be sure that Jesus is on the throne of our heart. I love you, Jesus. Move in this altar call and we'll praise you in Jesus' name while we all stand. Does anybody need to pray this morning? Anybody need to pray? Anybody need to pray? Anybody need to pray? Where is Jesus at in your heart? Where is He at? Anybody else need to pray? Preacher, I'll be honest. I've, I've just kind of scooted Jesus to the back burner. I've not been living like I need to live. I ain't been doing the things I need to do. I've let things take the place of Jesus in my heart. I'd just like to come tell him I'm sorry. Anybody else need to pray? We love you so much, Jesus. Forgive us of our slothfulness. Help us to be fervent. Help us to be vigilant. Help us, God. Search our lives. I love you so much. Help me as a daddy and a husband. Be sure Jesus is shining out of my life. Help me to train up a child in the way it should go. When it is old, it won't depart. Oh, I love you, Jesus. You're so good.